Welcome back Interior Alaska. Joe Cook here with your local Thursday sports cast. Mushers are moving fast in this year's Iditarod. This afternoon, four-time champion Jeff King was the first musher into Ruby. King checked into Ruby at 1.02 p.m. today. He enjoyed his five-course gourmet meal. He will take his 24-hour rest. Brent Sass in second place. He went through Cripple, and he is headed to Ruby as well. Dallas CV, he is resting in Cripple in third place. Noah Burmeister and Robert Sorley complete the top five. Mitch CV and Hugh Neff are 11th and 12th. Now Lance Mackey, he doubled back to Ofer, but there hasn't been any official word as to why he sits 46 overall after being in the top 10 for much of this race. And there will be mushing in the interior this weekend at the Jeff Studdard Race Ground. Sprint mushers will hit the trails for the Animate Limited North American Championships. There will be two dog ski drawer, four, six, and eight dog classes, and a $12,000 purse. Defending champions Greg Zurich, Pam Schamber, Don Brown, and Jerry Woods are back to defend their ski drawer, four, six, and eight dog titles. There will be two minute intervals between teams and 30 minute breaks between classes. The LNAC starts Friday at 11 a.m. The Alaska Nanak hockey team will be in the WCHA quarterfinals this weekend. They will face the Michigan Tech Huskies for the fifth time, but it's a showdown they are looking forward to. Fresh off their victorious Gov Cup series, the Alaska Nanooks packed up early this week to go back to Houghton, Michigan. The number eight Nanooks will face the number one Michigan Tech Huskies in Friday's WCHA quarterfinals. UAF will be in familiar territory. I think it's actually, you know, nice that we were down there two weeks ago and, you know, we'll get in, we'll, we'll know the routine of the, of the town and know the routine at the rink. We know what the boards are doing. It's a building that we've gone into and won before and, uh, and we've also put ourselves in positions to win before. So it's not, uh, you know, something that we're not familiar with. This season, Tech is 4-0 against UAF, but in their last meeting, the Nooks lost two close one-goal games without Tyler Morley. Justin Woods stepped up and scored twice against Tech. I'm really excited. Um, our team played really well there, so uh, we just got to keep it going and um, play our game and we won't have to worry about anything, just focus and be ready. Morley is back after missing six games and is coming off a WCHA Player of the Week performance with four points against UAA. With the Nanooks nearing full strength, they believe they can pull off the upset. It's a big rivalry. Um, I think they're a good rivalry for us. I mean, we uh, played them almost four times every year in my career here, so... Now they kind of got us two weeks ago and now to turn around and go back and get them again is going to be pretty cool. I think we're coming together now and like uh, we know it's going to have to, it's going to be hard and we know what we got to do and like I said we're just going to come with that momentum like we had this week and bring it up to Mitch Tech and uh, give the Huskies a run for their money. Puck drop is at 3.07 p.m. Alaska time on Friday for game one in the best of three game series. Joe Cook reports. Staying with the hockey team, senior and UAF team captain Tyler Morley was named to the first team all WCHA today. Despite missing six games, he finished six in the WCHA and scoring 28 points in 27 games. His 16 goals were second best in the conference. Also, 15 UAF hockey players also made the WCHA all academic team for having GPH 3.0 or higher. And former Fairbanks ice dog Wyatt Eggy made the all WCHA rookie team. Eggy led all rookie defensemen with 13 points for UAA. Another Alaska team will be chasing championships this weekend. The fifth ranked UAF rifle team will be seeking their 11th national title at the NCAA championships at the University of Akron. The Nooks are shooting their best at the right time and their last two outings they've scored over 4,700. They've scored at least 4,700 or more points. They will be led by Sagan, Madalena, Tim Sherry, Soren Butler, Luke Johnson and JT Schneering. Friday is small bore and Saturday is air rifle. And for the third straight season, the West Valley Wolfpack girls basketball team has the player of the year, and that's historical. Senior forward Ruthie Hebert was named Alaska Gatorade Player of the Year today. She's the first Alaskan player to win the honor three years in a row. This season, Hebert is averaging 25.9 points, 14.8 rebounds, three steals, and two, plot, two blocks per game. Hebert signed early to be an Oregon Duck next year. Competitive basketball action took place today in the first round of the Aurora Conference Tournament. The Hutchinson Hawks hosted the Delta Junction Huskies in a tight first round game. Delta had a one point edge at halftime, 28-27.
Hutch was down just 37-39 going to the fourth quarter. The Delta made enough plays late and they escaped with a 58-52 win in the opening round. The Valdez Buccaneers and Allison Ravens, they opened up the tourney this morning. The Ravens stayed within reach of the Bucks, trailing by eight with 447 left in the game. But the Bucks they closed out the game with an 11-3 run and they went 57-41. They will play Monroe in round two. And these regional games are paramount. The latest, the latest winning percentage index or WPI rankings were released yesterday. The top six are considered for any at-large state tournament berths. In 4A boys, the Wolf Pack, they are seventh. The West Valley and Lathrop girls are fifth and sixth. And in 3A boys, Monroe is second and Delta is fifth. The Hutchinson girls are third in the 3A girls ranks. The MAC has one automatic berth and the Aurora, the Aurora Conference has two for state. And that's it for sports. Thanks for watching. Mike Schultz is next with your full weather forecast, and we'll catch you next time.